Welcome to another episode of Cracking Packs and Life Hacks, where we are going to crack some packs of magic cards and talk about some life hacks. So today's topic again is uh is is about a current event, right? Um, the today's topic is what is the difference between magic and sports cards, right? But first, let's pick a pack to crack. And we'll assign these packs as one through six. And I'll use my random number generator here to pick what set we're going to pack, open up. Ooh, Strixhaven. All right. So we got Strixhaven here. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll go one through six again. And we will open up pack number five. Okay. You know, I know very little about Strixhaven and um we'll see we'll see what we get here i'm gonna just replenish the stock there all right so like like i said today's topic is one that reflects um some things that have been going on with current events um i've been getting a lot of questions right a lot of questions oh my god this is bothering me a lot of questions about the game of magic. Oh, cool. I like this art, man. I don't know what she's doing, but it looks cool. Young student there. Mastering a skill. This card is, the art for this card is called, what? What? Eureka moment. Sorry, I'm saying what because I got lands here. I didn't know this card came with a land on top that's interesting but anyways yeah so i've been getting a lot of questions about the game of magic sorry it's taking me like a minute and a half to get this stuff going right this intro should not take this long anyways blah 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 i'm getting lots of questions about magic especially from people who don't play magic or aren't familiar with it um but first let's get the obvious differences out of the way like i'm not gonna talk about like sports cards are based about are based on sports and magic is based about a fantasy world. I'm not going to talk about that stuff. I'm going to be talking more about the gameplay and the collecting and the financial culture surrounding magic and sports cards, right? So for reference, I know a lot about magic. I've been playing magic for like off and on for at least like, I don't know, 20 years. And I've got some experience with sports cards and um, I played Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh when those um, games first came out. Um, but a lot of people are wondering why every time they go to Walmart and Target, even before Target stopped selling Pokemon, NBA, NFL, and NBA cards, that they would see nothing but Magic cards, right? Whenever I go into a shop or a shop where my friends uh, would just ask me like questions like, why are there so many Magic cards? All I see are Magic cards. Like, do people even play this game? Like, is it like really unpopular? Like, what's going on with it? Like, how come... Like, I can't buy Magic and, like, sell it on the secondhand market for more money like I do with Pokemon and, um, and sports cards. You know, those are all great, valid questions, right? Um, and I always tell people that, you know, Magic is a game first, right? People buy these cards to build decks with them with the intention of playing other players, right? There's not a huge market for people to buy new cards, to get them graded, and then to sell those graded slabs for a profit. That just doesn't happen in the world of Magic because we want to use these cards to play the game. And it's a great game, all right? Um, I love this game. It's like my all-time favorite game, right? And people use, when, when people hear me say that, they're like, oh, wow, really? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Like, I played, the first time I played Settlers of Catan was in like 2002, 2001-ish. And that's when the game kind of was first starting to pick up some momentum. And then it wasn't until, gosh, maybe about 2008 or nine when that Settlers of Catan boom happened. I'm not saying I'm a trendsetter, but I like board games. I like card games. I've even played 40K, which is, an, which is probably my second favorite game um, out there. Um, yeah, so anyways, I've got a lot of experience with card games and board games and some with sports cards. But um, 
But yeah, there's, there's not a huge market for flippers in Magic. But during COVID, um, all trading cards saw a bump in the man. Um, there was, for the first time in Magic's history, where people were hunting for new cards to grade and sell, right? To sell. You know, flippers and investors were looking for this card. It's a foil, full art jeweled lotus from the Commander Legends set. I'll put a picture of it up on the video, and I'll also put up a link up here um, where I opened up one of those cards. I didn't open up the full art for the version, but I, I did open up the jeweled Lotus from Commander Legends, right? But honestly, like I said, Magic players, they don't care about doing that because we want to play the game because the game is so much fun, right? So before I talk more specifically about the difference between Magic and sports cards, you know, let's take a look at the rares and the mythics that we got in this pack. So let me see, this is my second yeah, this is my second uncommon. This is my third uncommon Kerok Wrangler. And we got, ooh, Accomplished Alchemist. Three in the green, it's two, five, Elf Druid. You can tap it to add one mana of any color, or you can tap it for X mana of any one color where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Okay, interesting. All right, and we also got, ooh. Snake skin veil. I actually really like this card because you can do some pretty cool things with it, right? It's it's a green instant and you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains hex proof until the end of turn, right? This is a super fun card to play with. And we got oh we got another rare. It's a foil here. It is Baleful Mastery. It's three in the black instant. You may pay one in the black rather than pay this spells mana cost. If one in, one in a black was paid, an opponent draws a card, right? And you exile target creature or planeswalker. That's a pretty cool card. All right, and a pest token. All right, so I got some cool stuff there. Not too bad. We got a foil rare and another rare, and I don't know what you call these. I don't know what you call these. Uh, I know in call time they're called showcase cards. Um, I'm just gonna call it a full art card. Uncommon here, snake skin veil. All right, so let's pick another pack. We'll go one through six again, and we will open up. Ooh, Modern Horizons. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am excited for Modern Horizons. There's um. Modern Horizons 2, I think, is coming out in June or July. And so I've got, I think that's my last, these are my last six packs of Modern Horizons. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm checking through my inventory here. Yep, these are my last six packs. So maybe I'll do a short where I, where I open up all of these um, in anticipation for Modern Horizons 2 coming out. Or maybe, you know what? Maybe I'll give these away, right? So stay tuned. Maybe I'll just give these away to you guys. Maybe you guys will get like a $60, $70 card out of here. Anyways, Modern Horizons. Let's open this up. Very happy to open this up. Ah, okay, so where was I? All right, so like Magic players prefer to play... <clears throat> excuse me. Magic players prefer to own a card and play with it rather than buy it and grade it and flip it or buy the product to hold on to it in hopes that it will um, increase in value, right? That's just not how magic works, right? <clears throat> magic, if you hold sealed product in magic, you have to wait at least, I want to say at least five years before it starts making huge amounts of profits. I mean, if you buy a box of magic cards for like 120 bucks you're gonna have to wait at least like in five years that 120 dollars box might be worth 200 bucks you know that's not a huge margin um of return on unsealed products so magic players we just don't grade we don't flip we don't really do any of that um so oftentimes <clears throat> excuse me again magic players need four sorry four copies of a spell 
um, of a card for their deck to work properly, right? And for most Magic formats, you're limited to four copies of one card per deck. Just like in Pokemon, you're limited to four. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you're limited to three cards um, per deck. And um, so if you multiply four cards times like four to eight different individual cards that you need for a deck, um, you know, that's magic can get expensive if those individual cards are expensive cards, right? So I've got some examples here, right? So like imagine for all you sports people, like imagine if you needed like four Justin Herbert rookie cards and four Emmanuel quickly rookie cards and four Tua rookie cards and you needed, you know, four Austin Martin, you know, Bowman first cards to make your deck work. Like that's a lot of money, right? But in magic, um, you, so in magic, they intentionally overprint these cards so that there's a lot of it out there. So that in order to play this game, you're not paying like 800 bucks to build a deck to play this game, right? That's just super expensive. You know, I think right now the average standard deck costs around like anywhere from like, I'd say around 200 bucks. The last time I checked, right? And so Magic intentionally overprints these cards. They intentionally overprint so that people have access to all of these cards so that they can play the game, right? Because like I said before, Magic is a game and it's not, people don't buy these cards to flip. They buy these cards to play the game, right? So um, sports cards are intentionally underprinted to keep the supply low and to drive up demand, right? So that's the first thing I tell um, my friends who don't play Magic, but they are into trading cards, right? The, but I tell them that this next thing as well, that the most important factor, um, the one major factor that Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and sports cards have that Magic doesn't, especially with Millennials, is nostalgia, right? Nostalgia is a powerful powerful factor in anything that is collectible right with millennials now ranging from the age of like 25 to 40 ish you know they're equipped with, with jobs and with stimulus money and now they can purchase items they wish they could have owned when they were children and teenagers right so anything that can take you back to your childhood when you had none to few responsibilities and like it instantly releases dopamine attached with childhood memories into your mind and body is a powerful force. And that's what nostalgia does, right? So when you combine nostalgia with social media hype, with um, the likes of influencers like um, Logan Paul, Gary Vaynerchuk, Mr. Beast, Post Malone, etc., right? You get like this nuclear reaction in the hearts and souls of millennials all over the world, right? When society mixes something that goes viral with something that produces like large amounts of positive childhood memories, you get something like the past year for the world of trading cards, right? Me personally, I think it has been an incredible year for trading cards. It's been incredibly like fascinating and just beautiful all at the same time. Cause I'm just seeing people just rekindle their love for Pokemon and for sports cards, right? I mean, don't you agree? It's been a good year. It's been fun, right? So my rear is a cabal therapist. Oh my goodness. All right, so um, I don't know if this, calls, this card is good or not, but I know cabal therapy is a good card. And this is a Cabal Therapist. So it's a black for a 1-1 one, one creature. It's a horror. It's got menace. And at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, choose a non-land card name. Then target play reveals their hand and discards all cards with that name. Okay. All right. 
interesting. Cabal Therapist and, ooh, look at that snow covered island. All right, and we got a trumpeting, trumpeting herd. And we got, what's that? It's like lightning something. What is it called? Lightning Skelemental, right? And we got an elemental token. Cool. All right. Um, so I want to open up one more pack. And because we're talking about sports cards again, I want to open up another pack of sports cards before I wrap up here. So I just want to uh, give a shout out to my buddy Lang here. He bought me this when he was out in Colorado with his brother and they were hunting for cards. It's a 2021 Topps Heritage Baseball, right? Uh, and I and I like this stuff, right? Um, Heritage isn't like a super popular um, baseball set, but I mean, I like it. I like it because it reminds me of baseball cards from like the 80s and 90s and 70s, 70s through 90s, and it's printed on this like super thick cardboard stock. Man, look at that. All right, so let's see what we got here. We got Jose Ramirez, who I think is like a Hall of Fame candidate. Um, some people may not agree, but I mean, this guy hits above average, he's got decent power, and I don't know, man, I just think he's got, he's got Hall of Fame potential, right? Tommy Malone, Joey Gallo in action, ooh, Blue Jay rookie cards, Nate Pearson, I don't know who this is, but I know Nate Pearson's playing the majors and he hopefully he does well, NL pitching leaders, look at that. The Cubs traded you Darvish away for some prospects, and we also got Zach Davies. So we traded our the number one NL pitcher for the number two NL pitcher. And we got a bunch of um, prospects too. So I think that was a pretty good trade. I miss you, I miss you Darvish, but it's all right. Brandon Workman, Pablo Lopez, Max Kepler in action, go twins. Miguel Castro, Roberto Clemente. Ooh, this is cool. This is the insert, the great one, Roberto Clemente. All right, we got a flip for Mike Soroka, Nathan Ivaldi, Abraham Toro, Antonio Sen Senzatella, Nolan Arenado. Not a big fan of him anymore since he's a Cardinal. Tyler, <clears throat> Tyler Mayo, Trevor May, go Twins, Juan Soto, hey, I love Juan Soto, Max Freed, and Freddie Galvis. All right, so one cool thing about these cards is if you have a card that's like numbered over 400, that's considered like a short print card. So we'll see, did we get any card over 400? Nope, all right, but we did get, where do you go? Where did Juan Soto go? Here he is, Juan Soto. This guy, he's awesome. Awesome ball player, right? And so, um, to recap, I want to remind you that Magic is intentionally overprinted because it is a game first, right? That requires multiple copies of individual cards. More importantly, um, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and sports cards have been ingrained in the memories of millennials ever since they were young. So now when you have older millennials with disposable income and the hype that comes from viral social media posts, you get people buying everything. You get people buying the Pokemon, the Yu-Gi-Oh! and the sports cards, and they're not buying magic all right and i'm fine with that because i get it by the magic right so you know what let's give away some cards so i just want to remind you last week's video is up and we have until it says the 17th but you can win these cards there's a path to exile there's a u darvish and there's another card i forget what's in there but 
but you get you can you can win these three cards if you watch my previous video and you like comment and subscribe um you have until it says the 17th but you have until the 16th of june to enter that contest and win these cards and for this video you're gonna have a whole month as well to win let's give away the juan soto because he's awesome he's young um gosh i don't know what should we give away mm -hmm. i want to say i mean people like elves right so maybe there's something you can do with this card elves and let me see baleful mastery or cabal therapist i think baleful mastery is a better card and it's also a foil card so we'll give away three these three cards baleful mastery accomplished alchemist and juan soto for this video's giveaway all right and so to enter this giveaway you just have to um, subscribe to the channel like the video and leave a comment below all right and tell me what you would like to what, what do you collect from your childhood right? i collect legos and sports cards right and uh, I'll, like i said i'll give you a month to enter before i randomly pick a winner and i just want to remind you that i care about you and i want you to get better and i want you to enjoy magic and life more so make sure you like the video subscribe click on the bell to get notifications click on the clock to watch this video again later and share this video with your friends comment down below on what other topics you would like me to cover take care stay safe and i'll see you next time see ya